This problem was taken from the 2018 Nordic Baltic Physics Olympiad. Here we have an AC circuit where we have many uh, components of inductors, resistors, and capacitors connected in series and in parallel. The problem states that the potential difference from D to E is 7 volts and so on, and they want us to find the potential difference between um, A and B or V0. Now to solve this seemingly daunting problem, we need to introduce a concept called um, phasor diagrams. And what phasor diagrams allow us to do is it allows us to represent the voltage, current, uh, etc. of an AC circuit in terms of complex numbers. While this might make it sound more complex, it actually simplifies it a lot. For example, take this complex plane. Instead of treating the uh, current as a sinusoidal function, what we can do is treat it as a phasor. So here we have the current, let's call it that I. And what it's going to do is it exists in the complex plane and it's going to rotate around the complex plane with an angular velocity of omega. And what we are actually going to measure on the circuit though is going to be the real component of this phasor. So we still see that it oscillates sinusoidally, but here we've represented it um, as part of the complex plane such that the magnitude doesn't change, only its direction in relation to the real axis. Next up, we need to introduce the concept of complex impedances, which basically allow us to treat capacitors and inductors as just resistors. For example, the effective resistance or impedance of a resistor is just going to be R. Nothing's going to be changed there. But the effective resistance of a capacitor is going to be negative I over omega C, where I is going to be the complex number, imaginary number, the square root of negative 1. And the impedance of uh, inductor is going to be I omega L. Now what happens when, so these complex impedances basically allow us to get the potential difference between two points simply by multiplying the current and the impedance just like we would do in a normal resistor circuit. However, there is a caveat here and it's that we have these complex numbers here. But what they basically do is they rotate the uh, complex phasor I by 90 degrees or negative 90 degrees and then scale it up by either uh, 1 over omega C or omega L. Now let's do an example. To actually solve this problem, we'll draw a phasor diagram of all three branches that the current can take. Now note that the current through these three branches won't necessarily be constant and uh, be the same throughout. Uh, so as a result, the phase shift of the current, which is basically its angle with respect to the real plane, won't necessarily be the same whether you're going from the top branch, middle branch, or lower branch. But what should be the same is that the potential difference from A to B, no matter what path you take, is going to be the same, and that's given by Kirchhoff's loop rule. So here we have A to B, and we're again going to model the uh, effective, we're going to model the potential differences in its complex plane. So A to B is going to be the real axis. Let's start from the middle branch, just to illustrate the point. So let's say that if we have our current phasor pointing some arbitrary angle like this, then in order to, let's make it smaller, in order to get its potential difference from A to E, all we have to do is multiply it by R. 
and to multiply it by r, we just simply scale it up or scale it down a tiny bit. But then to uh, get the potential difference across the inductor, what we're going to do is rotate the vector by 90 degrees in the counterclockwise direction first, and then we're going to scale it up by omega L. But you can see here that if we do that, it's going to look something like this. And the total potential difference is not going to end up at B, which it should. To remedy this, what we're going to do is instead say that the current phasor, at least from A to B, is going to be downwards here. So that this is the uh, potential difference from A to E. And then when we rotate it counterclockwise by 90 degrees, we perfectly meet up to B. Keep in mind that right now we're just drawing a qualitative diagram. So not all and lengths will be to scale. But the potential difference here is going to be, oops, that's going to be E. From A to E is going to be I, R and the potential difference, let's draw it here, IR, and the potential difference from E to B is going to be uh, I omega L. Now let's look at the potential difference uh, through the bottom strand. And here we again have another um, inductor and another resistor but their positions are switched. Therefore, uh, if the current phasor still points downwards like this, then what we're going to have is we're going to rotate, by, rotate it counterclockwise by 90 degrees. So we're going to have something like this. And when we add in the current phasor, multiplied it by the resistance, we're going to get to B. But since their positions are flipped, you can see that um, it's also flipped on the opposite side of AB. Just to label this to give us more of a concrete understanding of what's going on here, that would be point F, and the potential difference from A to F would be I omega L. I'll call that L naught, that L1, and that R naught. And the potential difference from F to B is going to be I R1. Now, finally, we have our last branch from A to D to B. Here we go to a capacitor first. And when we multiply the current by the impedance of a capacitor, we need to first rotate it clockwise by 90 degrees first, since we're multiplying by negative i, and then scale it up or down, um, scale it by a factor of 1 over omega c. Now, in order for the combined potential difference uh, to be between a and go from a to b, we need our current vector, fit or phasor, to point somewhere in this direction, such that when we uh, multiply it by negative i over omega c, it goes like that. But since we first um, go through our capacitor, it's going to be flipped on the opposite side. So let's say that's due to the capacitor, and that's due to the resistor. So that's going to be D. The magnitude of AD is going to be uh, I over omega C. And the magnitude of DB is going to be IR2. Now, something to notice is that AEB, ADB, and AFB are all right angles, where uh, AB is the hypotenuse for all three. That means we can actually represent this as a circle. 
the points all lie on a circle. And I'll try to draw a better circle here. It's not exactly a circle, it's more ovally, but you understand what I mean. Because here, we're given new information. We have the potential difference from D to E is 7 volts. So what we can do is say that the distance there is going to be 7 volts. Then it tells us that the potential difference from D to F is 15 volts. So we can represent it on the complex plane like that and say that it is 15 volts. And finally, we have the potential difference from E to F as 20 volts. We see here that because we drew a phasor diagram, this is effectively just a geometry problem now. We have three sides of a triangle that are given to us inscribed in a circle, and we wish to find the length AB, the potential difference from A to B. So we just need to find the diameter of the circumcircle. We can do this by noting the area of this triangle in two separate ways. Now erase these for now to give me more space. First, we can use Huron's formula, which states that if uh, the sides of a triangle are given by ABC, then the semi-perimeter is going to be half the total perimeter. In this case, it's going to be 21. And I'm dropping the units here. And the area is going to be the square root of the semi-perimeter times the semi-perimeter minus the first side times s minus the second side times s minus the third side and this is going to give you 42. Again I'm dropping the units. But we can also figure out the area of a triangle if we know the diameter of the circumcircle that it um, is inscribed in. And that formula is given by a equals ABC over 2D, where ABC are the sides and D is the diameter of the circumcircle. In this scenario, we already know the area of this triangle, and we just need to figure out D, the length from A to B, which represents the voltage difference from A to B or V naught. So rearranging, we get D is equal to A times B times C, which is 7, over 2 times the area, 42, which will give us 25. So therefore, the voltage difference from A to B is going to be 25 volts, and that's also going to be V0. And there we have it. A geometry problem and disguise inside an AC circuit problem.